Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Live at One, the digital edition. I'm Michael Njenga. President Uhuru Kenyatta has departed for Algeria where he is expected to hold talks with North African countries' leadership in a bid to boost bilateral ties between the two nations. The plane carrying the president and his entourage departed from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport shortly after 9 a.m. this morning. During the three-day state visit, the president is expected to hold talks with President Abdelaziz Bouteflika, Prime Minister Abdel Malik. Salal and the People's National Assembly Speaker Mohammed Larbi Od Khalifa. Move on to Banta's crime and a man who was caught on camera allegedly stealing at a Total Service petrol station supermarket in Kericho five days ago has finally been arrested. The suspect, believed to be his in his early 30s, was allegedly spotted pocketing a three-liter can of cooking oil in his jacket. Security officers at the petrol station had a rough time controlling an angry mob that was baying for his blood. He is currently being held at the Kericho police station. ndio kuna mtu anao operate CCTV huko sasa alionekana kama ameipa hiyo ah alikuwa amenunua uh, ni mafuta ile yanda ya 3 liters now, a 25-year-old male first-year student of the Kenya Medical Training College Moranga campus has committed suicide of an alleged love affair gone sour. This incident is the second suicide occurrence in the institution as a period of two weeks. Confirming the incident, Moranga East OCPD Johnston Limo said the police were alerted about the incident after the student's lifeless body was found behind the institution's hostels by staff. According to a fellow student, the the deceased had been suspicious on his girlfriend's fidelity and after he found her in another male student's room, he was furious and stormed out. Earlier this month, the department head was inter interdicted following an incident in which a student committed suicide after being barred from sitting for his examinations of 6,000 shillings fee balance. And later we investigated, we found a note he had left uh, involving a love affair with a certain uh, MTC student, of which I cannot reveal the name, for uh, the matter is under him. Now, hundreds of parents of Matu uh, a State Primary School have held demos to protest alleged grabbing of a section of their school land. The demos were led by a school's board of management, which led parents in erecting a perimeter fence around the land. The parents pointed an accusing finger at a local chief whom they accused of plotting to sell the land. The bone of contention is that the committee co cooperative society allocated the school 14 acres of land, but the chief claims it only has 12 acres of land in a bid to sell the remaining part of the land. The parents have now asked the Lands Cabinet Secretary Charity Ngilu to intervene. Ninaomba sirikali itusaidie hii kiwanza kia shule. Sasa hivyo tutakuwa tumuomba kwa imani kwa vivyo vile vile anaweza fanya atuwe hatuwezi kupatia title deed ile tuzuie uwanja wetu wa shule uziuzwe. On a sad note, five people among them, a woman and four men, narrowly escaped death after a car they were traveling in hit a tree along the Nakuru Cabernet Road. Their vehicle reportedly had a rear tire burst at a black spot in Radat. The vehicle swerved off the road and hit the tree after the driver lost control. Three of the occupants in the car were first rushed to the Marigat Sub County Hospital for first aid, after which they were transferred to the Cabernet County Referral Hospital for further treatment. Two of them were dis charged after receiving treatment. Cabernet County Referral Hospital Medical Superintendent Case Mburuka said that the, the three were in stable condition. I, I had a colleague who I picked in Emini. We were working in the same office together. And uh, she, then she was with other three people. So we were, all of us were, were five in the vehicle. Mm, when we came out, the, uh, there were some well wishes along the way. They stopped. They picked the very serious ones, there were two who uh, look, looked very serious. Then they pick, well, depending on the capacity. And then uh, there was also a small double cabin county vehicle. They also came, if they pick, he, he picked one person. And I was picked by another well-wisher also at Popox. 
Yeah. So reaching Marikat to Kaudumi was first aid, very fast. Uh, the staff was very ready, like they'd been al alerted, but I don't think maybe they were just, just ready. So they gave us first aid, and then the ambulance were, uh, uh, lifted us to this place. Let's now move on to Beauty Matters, where the first ever fashion and beauty contest for persons living with disability was held at the Mount Kenya University campus. Participants drawn from Kiambu County impressed the crowd when they catwalked down the aisles in adorning artists provided to them free of charge by Uzuri Institute, Thika, who also made their hair and modeled them. Over 50 women and men took to the stage to choose Mr. and Mrs. Disability, Kiambu County, as Mim Salim Juma and Frederick Mwangi were named Mr. and Miss Disability Kiambu County, respectively. Miss Disability in Kiambu and Mr. Disability in Kiambu County. So, to aim when the national. Indeed, disability is not inability. Pupils of Lemesgio Primary School in Samburu County were on Monday left without a roof over their heads at school. At the school, after their classroom roofs were blown away by strong winds on Sunday afternoon, school officials expressed shock at the scale of the damage caused by the storm. Lemesgio Primary School head teacher Patrick Lologine has requested the government to move with speed to help pupils settle down quickly following the incident. No injuries were reported. kama watoto wangekuwa hapa nafikiria tungekuwa na casualty hata walimu kwa sababu upepo ilikuja wakati hata watoto wangekuwa lunch na hii mama bati mnaona vile imesukuma ikapitia uwanja watoto huwa wana keti wanapoenda shumba sha maunguli sasa tunataka ku appeal kwa well wishes wale watu wangesaidia sisi upepo ulitokea kamalisa darasa tano Let's now move on to the day's business. An LIC bank has launched a leasing subsidiary as it looks to cash in on the emerging opportunities in the asset leasing finance sector. The new subsidiary NIC Leasing LLP is a limited liability partnership company that will provide leasing services with a particular focus on assets such as motor vehicles, construction equipment and medical equipment. NIC's move that comes at a time when the government is turning to leasing of motor vehicles and medical equipment as a means of sparing the taxpayer from the heavy upfront cost of acquiring maintaining such assets. Moving on, the government is looking to support local steel manufacturers to develop a fully-fledged steel industry in Kenya. Industrialization Cabinet Secretary Aidan Mohamed has said the government will develop infrastructure and appropriate policies to reduce the country's dependence on imported steel. According to Aidan, Kenya spends at least 36 billion shillings every year on imported steel billets, which are all raw materials to local steel mills. The industrialization CS said this during a tour of Maisha Mabati Mills in Roiro Kiambu County. The factory in, is an associate company of the DevKey group of companies funded by in the industrialist Narendra Raval. During his tour of the factory, the CS urged local manufacturers to pass on the benefits of lower energy costs that have been realized through the injection of an additional 280 megawatts of geothermal power into the national grid. The generation of geothermal power has resulted in a 65% reduction in the cost of power since August last year. That, uh, the chairman here confirmed to me that, for example, the price of cement has come down significantly from excess of 700 shillings per bag, um, you know, about a year or two ago to something less than 600 today. And we expect other commodities like unga, like oil and others to go down. And I think you would be able to see some of that. So we are having dialogue with the private sector. They appreciate what the government has done. They have made commitment to make sure that some of these benefits are also passed to the consumers at the end. 
Well, let's cross over to Ethiopia, where the world's second largest beer maker, Heineken, is betting on Ethiopia's rising incomes to fuel rapid expansion of the beer markets in Africa's second most populous country. Heineken is the first of the big international brewers to build a new plant in Ethiopia. It's happy hour at Meskelu Bar in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, and customers are enjoying the latest beer brands on the market. Walia Beer was launched here last year, but the world's largest brewery, Heineken Group, and it's already featuring heavily on bar tabs across Addis. First, I was tempted to give it a try because it carries the name of our national football team. Then I liked the taste. So I can say it is mainly that we like the brand. But also, the taste is so good. Ethiopia's average annual beer consumption of some 5 liters per capita is about half of the average level for sub-Saharan Africa, excluding South Africa, offering scope for expansion among the population. Heineken is betting on Ethiopia's rising incomes to fuel rapid expansion of the beer market in Africa's second most populous country, where the group is the first of the big international brewers to build a new plant. I'm so much impressed and moved to recognize your four years malt barley project aimed at improving natural self-sufficiency by substituting 20,000 tons of imported malting barley by locally produced one in partnership with local smallholder farmers. Ethiopia's economy is expanding at about 9% per year, steady growth that led to its debut $1 billion euro bond being oversubscribed last month. Company officials say Walia sales are a good indication of the potential in the market for new brands. Our first priority is to become a national player, eh? fulfill our, our ambition to become a national player all over Ethiopia. That's our first priority. Export also has to do a lot with the supply chain. Eh? In order to be able to export, you have to have a supply chain adapted to the export market. Heineken has brought numerous plants in Africa and built two, one in Nigeria in 2000 and another in South Africa in 2008. It has been gradually ramping up its new plant in Ethiopia since July. The 11.8 billion shilling brewery with a capacity of 1.8 million hectolitres is the largest in the country and located near Addis Ababa. The new facility adds to the Bedele and Harar breweries, each some 500 kilometres from Addis Ababa, that Heineken bought from the state for a combined 14.8 billion shillings in 2011. Heineken came up with this tree. A good brand name, light beer, and cheaper price. Heineken Ethiopia said the new brewery would initially focus on local brands Hamar and Bedele, but could start producing the premium Heineken brand next year. Heineken is the number two player in Ethiopia, where its competitors include Diageo, which acquired Meta Abo Brewing in 2012 for 20.5 billion shillings, and market leader BGI, a long-standing player bought by French drinks company Castle in 1990. Well, at the currency market, the Kenyan shilling continues to hold steady against the U.S. dollar amid expectations that it could come under pressure from oil importers buying dollars to meet their end-month supply obligations. According to the Central Bank of Kenya, commercial banks are buying the dollar at an indicative rate of 91 shillings and 34 cents and selling it at 91 shillings and 49 cents. Against the euro, the Kenyan shilling is trading at 103 shillings and 44 cents, buying 103 shillings and 61 cents selling while exchanging at 140 shillings and 95 cents buying 141 shillings and 22 cents selling against the sterling pound Nyara, our borders the local unit is exchanging at seven shillings and 47 cents buying seven shillings and 54 cents selling to the rwandese franc versus the tanzanian shilling the kenya shilling has been posted at 20 shillings flat buying 20 shillings and 14 cents selling while trading at 31 shillings and 36 cents buying 31 shillings and 53 cents selling to the ugandan shilling
part one digital edition. Thank you very much for being with us. We'll definitely uh, have this on our subsequent bulletins. My name is Michael Njenga. Good.